Let me turn me up. Amen. Praise God. We made it one more. A Sunday morning. Let us rejoice and be glad on this morning. Uh, this morning, listen, uh, today is the first Sunday. It is communion Sunday. Okay. I'm going to give you one minute. Just take one minute right now. I'll grab you a small little cracker, a little piece of bread, uh, a tiny bit to drink. You know, don't be hungry and uh, <laughs> uh, trying to eat during communion. That is God's uh, time. Uh, praise God. So just grab your little crack, a little piece of bread, and we are going to get started today. Uh, and how we're going to do it is, uh, I wish I saw uh, more faces on a Sunday morning, praise God, the first Sunday at that. Uh, but I praise God for everybody here. Um, and what I want is, um, I want us to enjoy the Lord on this morning, praise God. About 10 more seconds, just grab you something, praise God. Amen. And what we're going to do is we're going to open up uh, with prayer by Pastor Key. Uh, we're going to have a scripture reading uh, by Sister Janine. Uh, and then we're going to go right into praise and worship. And I pray you all be blessed on this morning. Amen. 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 Praise God. And let us go into prayer. Amen. Father God, in the name of Jesus, Lord, we thank you for this day, God. We thank you, God, for giving us another chance, God, Lord, to come to you, God, to commune with you, Father. Lord, so we come on this morning, God, with thanksgiving and praise, God. Lord, we come lifting up your holy name, God. Lord, we come on this morning, oh God, giving you, oh God, what is due, God. We come this morning, oh God, Lord, giving ourselves unto you, Father, fully, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, Lord, we thank you, oh God, for all things, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for the opportunities, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, that it is you who have called us. It is you who have chosen us, oh God. And Lord, we say thank you for that on this morning, oh God. Dear Heavenly Father, God, Lord, we pray right now, Father, that you will have your way, oh God, in this service, oh God. Lord, that you will make baby glorified, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, Lord, you move. Holy Spirit, have your way in the name of Jesus. Father God, Lord, bless the Spirit her on today, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, you use her, oh God, in a mighty way, oh God, on this morning, oh God. Every person that is here, God, let them have an ear to hear, God. Lord, what is being said, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Let their hearts be prepared, oh God, in the name of Jesus. Let us receive your word, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father, let us, oh God, understand your word, oh God. Receive what it is that you are saying to the individual, oh God, in the name of Jesus, oh God. Lord, we thank you, oh God, for this service, for this day, oh God, this day that we are concerned about, oh God. So God, we will give you our best, oh God, on today, oh God. Lord, we give you the glory, the praise, oh God, all of the honor. It all belongs to you, oh God, on this morning, oh God. And Father, we praise your holy name in these things we ask. And Jesus' mighty name, thank God and amen. Amen, amen. Praise God. Good morning, church. Good morning, good morning. Good morning. I hey. love y'all. Good morning. Today's scripture read reading is coming from the book of Psalms, chapter 100, a psalm of praise. Make a joyful noise unto the Lord, all ye lands. Serve the Lord with gladness. Come before his presence with singing. Know ye that the Lord, he is God. It is he that hath made us and not we ourselves. We are his people and the sheep of his pasture. Enter into his gates with thanksgiving and into his courts with praise. Be thankful unto him and bless his name for the Lord is good. His mercy is everlasting and his truth endureth to all generations. Amen. Amen. Praise God. Amen. Praise God. And so we thank God for the reading of God's blessed word. Amen. Hallelujah. And we are going into our praise and worship. Amen. So I would encourage you uh, to just redirect yourself, redirect your thoughts. Uh, think about uh, our Savior, uh, your Savior, the one who pulled you out, uh, because this is the day uh, that he came, he died, and he rose uh, 
and he gave us life. Uh, so I want to encourage you uh, to step out of you. Amen. Amen. There's a lot of things going on, but I'm telling you, God is greater than it is. Amen. And he deserves all of us. Amen. Hallelujah. Thank you, Lord. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy I have, the world didn't give it to me. This joy I have, the world didn't give it, the world didn't take it away. Oh, this joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. Oh, this joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, all this peace I have. The world didn't give it to me. This peace I have. The world didn't give it to me. This peace I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. All oh, this peace I have. The world didn't give it to me. This peace I have. The world didn't give it to me. This peace I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this hope I have. The world didn't give it to me. This hope I have. The world didn't give it to me. This hope I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it. The world didn't take it away. Oh, this joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy I have. world didn't give it to me. This joy I have. world didn't give it to me. Listen, world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. Oh, this peace I have. world didn't give it to me. This peace I have. world didn't give it to me. This peace I have. world didn't give it to me. world didn't give it. The world can't take it away. This love I have, world didn't give it to me. This love I have, world didn't give it to me. This love I have, world didn't give it to me. World didn't give it, so I can't take it away. Oh, this love I have, world didn't give it to me. This love I have, world didn't give it to me. This love I have, world didn't give it to me. World didn't give it, the world can't take it away. The Holy Ghost I have, the world didn't give it to me. The Holy Ghost I have, the world didn't give it to me. The Holy Ghost I have, the world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Oh, Holy Ghost, I have. The world didn't give it to me. Holy Ghost, I have. The world didn't give it to me. Holy Ghost, I have. The world didn't give it to me. The world didn't take it. The world didn't take it away. Oh, this joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy I have. The world didn't give it to me. This joy I have, world didn't give it to me. World didn't give it, the world can't take it away. Oh, this peace I have, world didn't give it to me. This peace I have, world didn't give it to me. This peace I have, world didn't give it to me. The world didn't give it, the world can't take it away. We're gonna tear your kingdom down.
this land. Say now we're gonna tear your kingdom down. Say now we're gonna tear your kingdom down. Say now we're gonna tear your kingdom down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land. Say now we're gonna tear your kingdom down. Say now we're gonna tear your kingdom down. Say now we're gonna tear your kingdom down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land. Say now we're gonna tear your kingdom down. For the preacher is going to tear your kingdom down. The preacher is going to tear your kingdom down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land. But say down, we're going to tear your kingdom down. Oh, say now, we're gonna tear your kingdom down. Sing it like you mean it. Oh, say now, we're gonna tear your kingdom down. Oh, you've been building your kingdom all over this land. Oh, say now, we're gonna tear your kingdom down. Oh, say now, we're going to tear your kingdom down. Say now, we're going to tear your kingdom down. You've been building your kingdom all over this land. Say now, we're going to tear your kingdom down. Oh, yeah. Amen. And so we thank God. Hallelujah. Or praise and worship. Amen. We thank God uh, on this morning for who he is and what he is in our life. Amen. Amen. And so I thank God for those songs on this morning. Amen. Identifying the power of Jesus Christ. Amen. And so I thank God for it. the joy I have the peace I have, the love I have, uh, nobody can take that from me. They didn't give it to me, so they can't snatch nothing. I just got to operate in what God has given unto me. Amen. And so I thank God for it, that we know uh, that God gave us some things. And the only way that we can get to them and we can uh, feel these things and know these things, if we allow ourselves to operate in what the Father has given to us through his son, Jesus Christ. Amen. So I thank God on this morning for what he has given unto us. And I pray that you be uplifted. I pray uh, that you were moved and that you understand, amen, who, who God is, even more so on this day in your life, amen. And so we thank God, amen, for the woman uh, that is going to break bread this morning, amen, amen. And we praise God for her. We praise God for her uh, moving forward and doing what she do, amen. And some don't know, you know, she's, 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 building herself, amen, uh, to be able to produce and give to the body of Christ, amen. And so I, I I don't talk to her as much as I used to because she's handling some things that God is requiring of her. And so we we honor her and we thank God for her uh, for taking the extra step uh, that she's doing, amen, uh, to open up her mind and her knowledge of uh, through others teaching. Amen. So we thank God for her that she's showing up here on Sunday. Amen. To deliver uh, the word of God unto us. Amen. I believe she's running off of maybe about two hours of sleep. Amen. Amen. So we're going to allow her, we're going to allow her uh, to have her way as the Lord use her. Amen. And she take her time. Amen. Amen. Because she's been up. Amen. And I'm saying that because we love her. Amen. And so pray for her, pray for her strength. Amen. It's not easy when you're going forth. Amen. But this is what she loves to do. Amen. So we thank God for her. So receive our leadership. Amen. Pastor.
Shanisha Chapman, by the word of amen. Amen. Amen, church. I praise God. I praise God for you, Pastor Key. I praise God for uh, the praise and worship on today. That was uh, one of my favorite songs that my bishop used to sing. I, I love that song. <laughs> and I know uh, the mother of the church enjoyed it as well. Praise God. Amen. Uh, I thank God uh, for the prayer on this morning. I thank God uh, again for each and every one of you showing up on this morning. Uh, you can be a thousand other places, but you chose to be here. Uh, with pillars of truth, and I praise God for it. Amen. Uh, we're going to get right into the word. Uh, if I lose my voice, I'm still going to get it out, I promise. Uh, and I just need you to bear with me on this morning. We just got a couple more weeks uh, to uh, be team no sleep, praise God. Uh, but we're going to make it. We're going to make it. Uh, and I praise God for everybody praying for me uh, every day. You know, and I, I just thank God. I can't thank God for my circle enough, my church home, my church family enough. Praise God. Uh, we're going to do some reading today and I got to give you some information. I'm going to take my time uh, and I'm not going to rush it. I'm not going to push it, uh, but I'm going to talk to you on this morning. Praise God. Uh, we're going to be reading uh, 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 about King David. So I need you guys, uh, if you can, to have your Bibles. I'm going to be uh, jumping just a little bit. And I know uh, you you guys are some soldiers. I know you guys are some study warriors. So you'll be able to find a uh, first Samuel and you'll be able to find second Samuel and you'll be able to find the book of Psalms. Praise God. Amen. We're going to start uh, first Samuel 16. I'm just going to give you a few scriptures. Okay. Uh, first Samuel we'll be reading in the 16th chapter. Uh, we'll be reading from second Samuel uh, chapter two. Uh, we'll be reading from 2 Samuel chapter 5. Uh, we're also going to read from Psalms 51. So if you put your finger in 1 Samuel, 2 Samuel, and Psalms, I believe it'll be all right. And I will take my time because I need you to get this. Uh, my subject this morning is please accept my praise. Lord, please accept my praise. And I'm just going to take a moment uh, to honor God in prayer. Lord, I thank you. And we come before you this morning as humbly as we know how. Lord, I'm asking that you uh, just bright on my lips. Lord, give me what to say to your people on this morning. Uh, and be with me, Lord, as I decrease and allow you to go forth in your mighty name. Uh, we thank you on this morning. In Jesus' name we pray. Thank God and amen. Uh, 1 Samuel 16, and I'm going to start at a B part, okay? And I'm going to try to keep you with me uh, because I want you to understand it. And I want you to hear uh, some things that we need to know about King David. You know, King David, uh, uh, this man's story is over 3,000 years old. It's a thousand years before Jesus walked this earth. Uh, but nevertheless, King David's story, I need you to hear it. And I need you to apply it to your life uh, today as I say, Lord, uh, please accept my praise. Uh, so when you look in the mirror, I want you to say, okay, uh, King David, my brother David, uh, he went through these things uh, and he honored God in this way. And I want to be uh, just like him, Lord, please accept my praise. And we'll get into it as we read about David, but I do want you to have uh, the information that you need uh, to understand what it is I'm saying, okay? Praise God. Okay, so everybody should have 1 Samuel uh, 16. And I'm gonna start, uh, not at the beginning of the very first verse, but I'm gonna go past uh, the question mark, okay? It says, uh, I will send thee, praise God. And I'm reading from the King James Version. I will send thee to Jesse the Bethlehemite, for I have provided me a king among his sons. Uh, this is the Lord talking to Samuel. Uh, Samuel is a prophet, and he wants Samuel to go and anoint somebody uh, in Jesse's house, one of Jesse's sons, uh, to be king. And Samuel said, how can I go? Uh, if Saul here, he will kill me. And the Lord said, take an heifer with thee and say, I am come uh, to sacrifice to the Lord and call Jesse to the sacrifice. And I will show thee what thou shalt do. And thou shalt anoint unto me him whom I name unto thee. We're going to skip down to verse six. 
I'm going to read six and seven. It says, and it came to pass when they were come that he looked on Eliab and said, surely the Lord's anointed is before him. But the Lord said unto Samuel, look not on his countenance or on the height of his stature, uh, because I have refused him. For the Lord seeth not as man seeth. For man looketh on the outward appearance, uh, but the Lord looketh on the heart. Praise God. Uh, the Lord was telling Samuel, do not look at his face structure or what he looked like on his face. Don't look like, don't look at his features. Don't look at his stature. Uh, don't look at his outer appearance. Uh, just wait on me. I have refused that guy. I have refused that son. And hey, listen, I, the Lord, I'm looking at the heart. I'm looking at the heart. Praise God. We're going to skip down to the 11th verse. It says, and Samuel said unto Jesse, are here all thy children? At this point, uh, Samuel and Jesse had went through just about all of Jesse's sons. And Jesse ain't thinking about David, that little shepherd boy, that farmer in the backyard tending to the sheep. And he says, and he said, there remaineth yet the youngest, and behold, he keepeth the sheep. And Samuel said unto Jesse, send and fetch him, or for, he, for we will not sit down till he come hither. And he sent and brought him in. Now he was ruddy, and with all of a beautiful countenance, and goodly to look to. And the Lord said, arise. Anoint him, for this is he. Praise God. We're going to skip on, and we're going to go to 2 Samuel 2 and 4. And so far we know of that the Lord was looking for David as a young man, a young shepherd boy. Praise God. And these scriptures we're going to read for your hearing because uh, sometimes we think, uh, that David was young uh, when God called him to be king. And sometimes you have uh, the, the mindset of a child or a teenager in your mind. Uh, but I want you to know the truth on this morning that David was anointed uh, three times and he was anointed at 30 years old uh, to be king. Uh, but we'll read the scriptures and let the scriptures tell us. Amen. Second Samuel 2 and 4. And it reads, And the men of Judah came, and there they anointed David king over the house of Judah. Uh, so we know that David, he was anointed and chosen by God by way of the prophet Samuel. So Samuel anoints David as he's a shepherd in the backyards and things occur. And then we get to 2 Samuel 2 and 4 where uh, David comes from the line, lineage of Judah and then he's anointed by the people. So the people love him for some things that he had done, praise God. We don't have time to go through the entire story of David. And I want you to put your focus where I'll put your focus at. Uh, so we won't discuss everything uh, that David has done, but David has been anointed uh, by Judah. And we'll go to 2 Samuel 5. 2 Samuel 5. And I'm gonna read verse one, and then I'm gonna skip to verse three through five, praise God. And it says, then came all the tribes of Israel to David unto Hebron and spake saying, behold, we are thy bone and thy flesh. Are uh, they telling David at this time, even though that Saul was king, he was like, they, they're saying, David, uh, you belong with us. You are part of Israel. And then skip down to three, it says, so all the elders of Israel came to the king to Hebron and King David made a league with them in Hebron uh, before the Lord. And they anointed David king over Israel. Uh, David was 30 years old uh, when he began to reign. And he reigned 40 years. And Hebron, which is the line of Judah, he reigned over Judah seven years and six months. And in Jerusalem, uh, which is all of Israel, he reigned 30 and three years over all Israel and Judah. Praise God uh, for the reading of the word. So we see, uh, and I set it up to show you uh, that David uh, was that guy. Uh, David was loved by everybody. Uh, everybody wants to anoint David, including God. Praise God. Uh, so we got to talk about for a second, I'm going to put uh, David down just for a second, right? Because my subject is please accept my praise. 
Praise. What is praise? Praise is an expression. It's an expression of approval. Uh, you find that in the Webster's Dictionary. Praise in is, is an expression of approval and it's admiration for someone or something. Admiration for someone or something. Biblically speaking, oh, you recount of the things that God has done for us. You would recount that thing and you would praise God for it. A praise and thanksgiving kind of a go hand in hand. So when you're giving thanks to God for what he has done and you're recounting all that he has done for you, or you are giving God praise in some way, shape or form. Uh, praise biblically is acknowledging all that God is to you in your life. All that he is and all that he has done. And if he never ever done a thing, uh, you can yet acknowledge him and say, Lord, I thank you. Uh, biblically speaking, praise is offering up thanks to the most high God. So whatever you offer God as praise, you're praising him because he is God almighty. Praise God. In the Hebrew language, they offer seven words uh, to let you understand what praise looks like. Praise God. You got told her in Romans 12, 1, it says, offer your body a living sacrifice. So in Hebrew, told her means sacrifice. Praise God. Yada is 1 Timothy 2 and 8. It's the lifting up of the hands. When you lift your hands in praise, a God receives it. Barak is bowing. A David bowed before the Lord in Psalms 5 and 7. And in Isaiah 12 and 6, you find Shabbat. Uh, that is a shout when you lift up your voice as, as with all your might. And you say, Lord, I thank you. Lord, I praise you. That is Shabbat. A uh, Zama is singing, uh, playing instruments, uh, listening to music. You find it in Ephesians 5 and 19. Halal. Halal is the root word for hallelujah. Praise God. Uh, but you're celebrating in some physical way, in some physical motion. Uh, you may be dancing. You may be rocking. You may be moving. You know I'm a rocker. You know, I'm a rocker. I just love to rock for the Lord. It's just a lot on my mind when I say I thank you, Lord, and I praise you. Uh, so I have that rock, understand? But halal, again, the root word for hallelujah. And the last word is tehila. Uh, tehila means praise God. Uh, tehila covers all the above. Tehila is anything that you want to do uh, to offer up praise uh, before God. Praise God. So to heal, when you think of Tehila, you say, I'm going to give him uh, my best praise. I'm going to give him uh, this type of praise today and that type of praise tomorrow. But I will not forget uh, to praise my God. And what does David have to do with praise? I tell you what, uh, David was a man after God's heart. Amen. Uh, Psalms uh, 17 and 8, I believe, he says, God says, David is the apple of my eye. Uh, David tells God, Lord, I am the apple of your eye. Uh, this same man uh, that was anointed three times, the same man who was accepted and loved by God in Israel, the same man. He slew Goliath with a slingshot, praise God. Uh, the same man uh, was a chief musician, and he used his harp uh, to play an evil spirit out of Saul. Praise God. Uh, this man, what does he know about praise? Uh, if I'm going to be honest about David, I know I painted a great picture, uh, but if I don't hide my hand, if I pull it out, and if I should tell the truth, uh, David was a man uh, who had committed adultery. He on the, uh, on the rooftop uh, looking around, uh, probably not minding his business as king, and he sees Bathsheba uh, taking a nice shower and doing what she do. And instead of uh, going inside, and doing what he needed to do with his wives and his concubines, he decided that he wanted Bathsheba. He took Bathsheba and he slept with her. He got her pregnant and the first baby died, praise God. At the end of the day, to cover up the pregnancy, he killed Uriah, he killed Bathsheba's husband. He lied, he stole, he broke about six of the Ten Commandments, uh, just by two acts, just by two acts. He was a king. God loved him. The apple of God's eye. God had his heart set on David. God made covenants with David. David looks, 
sees Bathsheba, sleeps with her, tries to have the husband sleep with her so he, so he could say, hey, you got her pregnant and cover it up. So you try to cover it up. Praise God. A David was, to some of us, a man who committed adultery. He was, to some of us, a man that committed murder. Or what is God doing with David? David is the man that knew how to praise God. That is the secret. That is it. That is the mystery. What did God love about David? A uh, David served God. A uh, David uh, praised God. A uh, David danced out of his clothes. David knew God and he knew what God would do. David trusted God. And yet he wrote six of the Ten Commandments. And God said, oh, my goodness. He said, listen, I can't allow that. He sent the prophet Nathan to David to talk to him and speak to him and say, oh, what would you do in this situation? David said, oh, that man deserves to die. Nathan said, that man is you, David. God came for David. A David, our first instinct is to hide from God when we sin. Our first instinct is to run, and it has been so since the beginning. When Adam and Eve committed a sin, they tried to cover themselves, and God had to walk down and say, where art thou? Adam had to say, Lord, here I am. Why didn't you come to me, Adam? He said, I was naked. Who told you you was naked? Oh, we find the same thing with David. Uh, David has committed some sins. Uh, God sent the prophet. God said, I got to go see about David. It doesn't change the love I have for him. I made him a promise and I have a work for him to do. Uh, so he went through the prophet, Nathan, and said, hey, that man is you. That man that did, didn't even require death in the Old Testament for what he had done. Uh, it required something else. But David gave him, say, hey. You should do all of that and kill him. And Nathan said, well, that man is you. That man is you. And David still, he waited, he waited, and he waited. And then here comes Psalms 51, uh, where he started his repentance, praise God. Uh, he said, Lord, he said, please. He said, I repent. Praise God. We're going to read Psalms 51. And I'm just going to read for you here in verse 3 and 4. Psalm 51, uh, verse three and four. and says, the entire psalm is his repentance. Uh, but I'm just going to read three and four because this is the main portion of his repentance. He says, for I acknowledge my transgressions and my sin is ever before me. Against thee, thee only have I sinned and done this evil in thy sight. Thou mightest be justified that thou be, mightest be justified when thou speakest and be clear when thou judgest. Uh, he said two things to God. Lord, I need you to wash me. I need you to make me clean. I need you to make me whole again. Why? Because I speak to your people. I deal with your people. I judge your people. And I don't need to be a castaway. Uh, Paul reiterated that. And he said, hey, I do what I do uh, because when I speak, uh, I don't want to be a castaway. I don't want to find myself uh, being judged by what I tell you. Praise God. So David uh, offered that same repentance to the Lord and said, Lord, it's not just about me. I have to deal with your people, Lord. I recognize that I am at error. And Lord, I'm asking you to forgive me. I repent. So, you know, uh, the Lord uh, forgave David. The Lord forgave David and he, for, and he listen, when Paul or, or Saul, rather, when Saul was acting a fool, uh, he was the first king of Israel. And when Saul was acting a fool, uh, God said, look, I need a different king. And he did it for less than what David did. Because what, what Saul did is when Saul would do what he wanted to do, he would say, Lord, I'm sorry for that. And then he would keep doing what he wanted to do. And he would say, Lord, I'm sorry for that. And then he would keep doing what he wanted to do. The covenant was made with King David. And God promised David. and said, I'm going to be with you. I'm going to direct you. I'm going to show you what it is you need to do. 
And David believed God and he trusted God. Some of us think the promises of God come with a condition. They don't come with a condition. A God loves us. And when he makes us a promise, he is sovereign. He knows what he's promising. He knows that it'll last because that's his word. He knows the end from the beginning. Uh, but make no mistake about it. A uh, King David, uh, he had to go through a punishment. It's not a um, uh, God wanted to do uh, something to David because David did something to God. No. It wasn't that David did something to these people, so God wanted to do something back to David. He didn't want to repay David back for what he did. He needed David to learn the lesson in the same manner in which he gave uh, the sin. So when David committed his sin, uh, he was deceiving. He was a murderer. Uh, God said, uh, for the rest of your days, there's going to be trouble in your house. Uh, that same sword that you used to kill Uriah, that same principle, that same thought process. Uh, that's going to be in your house forever. So David had to undergo a lot of family problems. Uh, his sons were killing each other. His uh, his his son raped his half sister. Uh, the full brother, the full blooded brother of the sister, found out about it. He was embarrassed by it. Uh, somebody was playing games with him, saying, "Hey, oh, that's why your sister got raped, and you didn't do nothing about it." Uh, this man was so upset uh, that he was looking for his brother. And he killed his brother. So much going on in the house. So much turmoil, turmoil in the house. Uh, because David decided uh, that he wanted Bathsheba. And then David decided that instead of being honest as a king and as a child of God, uh, that he was going to cover that thing up. God said, no. No, sir. So David had trouble all his days. The same man that was the apple of God's eye. The same man that had a heart after God. The same man that we just painted a picture of uh, was the people's guy. They all loved him. And David lived out 70 years. 70 years. What does David have to do with praise? King David wrote most of the Psalms. King David knew how to pray to the Lord. King David knew what it was to repent. He knew what it was to talk to the Lord. And here we have Psalms 119, 108. And it reads, accept, Lord, thy will and praise of thy mouth and teach me your laws. And I want you to understand, accept my praise, Lord, and accept and let me understand of the teaching of your ways. So not only did David repent, he said, Lord, I want to be able to get on my knees. I want to be able to lift my hands. I want to be able to dance out of my clothes uh, because I know who you are. In spite of what I've done, I yet I know who you are. Uh, so, Lord, I need you uh, to accept my praise. I know sometimes we don't feel worthy. We don't feel worthy uh, to praise God. Uh, we think about what we did on yesterday. We think about what we didn't do for the Lord when the Lord called us to do it. Uh, we think about our lives and we feel like we're coming up short. And we need God, Lord, please accept my praise. But I want you to understand, uh, this praise is not about you. Uh, this praise is about God and who he is and what he deserves. Uh, this is not about what you did yesterday. This is not about how you feel about yourself. Uh, this is about God himself. You see, when God makes promises, he made the promise to David. And because he made the promise, he kept it. In spite of what David had done, in order for God to be God, he had to say, you know what? Uh, David did that. And he will uh, have his punishment. But at the end of the day, I need David. I need to restore David because I need this mission uh, that is about me uh, to be carried out. In other words, God needs to get the glory. Uh, this is not about you and I. We have to get out of God's way and we have to get out of our own way. And we have to understand what it is uh, to give God his praise. And what we must do, just be like David did. Be humble and say, Lord, please accept my praise. Lord, please hear my humble cry. Oh, Lord, please, when I lift my hand, accept it. And you'll find in Psalms 22 and 3, it said, God inhabits the praises of his people.
It said God dwells in the space and in the place of your praise. So if you need God, praise is a form of thanksgiving. If you need God, you have to understand what it is to praise God. In the good, we praise God. In the bad, we praise God. When it looks ugly, we praise God. It's not going right. Lord, please accept my praise. It's going real good. Don't forget about God. Say, Lord, accept my praise. Uh, when somebody gives you honor, when somebody gives you glory on a personal level, you say, praise God. You give it back to God because that's what God gave you. All in all, Lord, please accept my praise. I thank God for the word on today because it hit me, you know, because sometimes, uh, you know, when you're thinking about how you praise God, uh, your hands that were way uplifted at one time are uh, starting to become a little low uh, to the point where you put your hands down. Uh, what starts off to be a great Sunday service where you so a uh, high and mighty and excited about uh, joining us and lifting up your hands to the Lord, it becomes tradition. It just becomes where you have to check the box. Or where you say, okay, I went to church today. I'm done with that. And now I can make it till next Sunday. We have to say, Lord, please accept my praise. Or we have to find that first love. We have to stay in the honeymoon phase. Or we have to find a reason uh, to lift up the name of Jesus. Uh, because he deserves it. And that is just who he is. It is not about you and I. Or we don't have nothing to do with the praises that the Lord deserves. We have absolutely nothing to do with who God is. We are the aftermath of who God is. We are the created and he is the creator. We are trying yet today to understand who God is. We look to the earth and we try to find these artifacts. We try to find things, bones and everything. Pieces of the ark boats and things uh, to see who God is. We try to make up religions. We just make a religion. Oh, because we know God put it on our hearts to praise and worship him. We conjure up these things. Oh, we build birds and hang them on the wall. We got masks that we look at to remind us to praise God. What are we doing? Moses went up to the top of the mountain to talk to the Lord. By the time he came down, these people had built, made a calf to worship it. It is not by works. It is unto works. There is nothing you can do to make God more of who he is. There is nothing we can do to strengthen the hand of God. When we say God is mighty, God is mighty all by itself. God is mighty with or without our testimony. So we have to understand him. We have to know him and we have to praise him for who he is. Uh, not according to what we have done, not because we feel real good on this Sunday, but this is what God deserves. This is what God requires of us. Uh, this is not, oh, I feel like it today and I don't tomorrow. Uh, this is a commandment from God. Uh, praise me uh, for who I am. Honor me because I am he. Love me. Because I first loved you. When you hide, I come to see about you. Who wouldn't serve a God like that? And so to you, I say today, Lord, please ask him. Say, Lord, please accept my praise. Praise God. I thank you for listening on today. Amen. Amen. Praise God. We thank God for the word. Amen. We thank God for the messenger. Amen. Uh, please accept my praise, Lord. She said, find a reason uh, to give God praise. 
And there's a million reasons why we would be able to give God praise. Amen. Uh, but with just one thing, uh, he gave us life. And that's to give him a praise every day, every second, every moment. Uh, because if it was back then in the days of Moses, uh, we would all be dead. Uh, so that's a reason to get up and say, Lord, I thank you. Uh, you deserve that, God. Uh, God, please accept my praise, God. Uh, even in the good, the bad, the ugly, the rough, uh, even when I'm getting roughed up, God, I, God, please accept it. Amen. So I thank God for this word uh, that was needed. Amen. Uh, it allows us to recollect oh, who God is and to understand uh, that there's a need. Uh, there's a need. And so we must uh, present ourselves unto the Lord. Amen. And she came from all over the the word of God. Amen. And so, because we got some who just believe in just, they just read the front and they stop and then they forget about uh, the, the, the transition that happened uh, that starts in the new gospel. Uh, so they don't go there. So I praise God how the word uh, helps uh, each other. Uh, you go to the old Testament, the New Testament, uh, there you'll find it. Amen. Um, so God is a God who knows all things and he set that up real well. So we praise God for you for delivering the word of God on today. And at this time, amen, uh, we are going to move right along and we're going to have our prayer. Amen. Um, our altar call. Amen. Hallelujah. At this time, uh, if you. Amen. I don't know if you guys know, but um, Wednesdays, we are praying uh, for the body of Christ. Amen. So we're going to have a corporate prayer. Amen. Hallelujah. And then we will move right into. Um, amen. We'll move right over to our leadership. Amen. Praise God. Praise God. Hallelujah. Dear Heavenly Father. Lord, we thank you, O oh God, for this word on today. God, we thank you, O oh God, for the service, O oh God. Lord, accept our praise, O oh God, Lord, in the mighty name of Jesus, O oh God. Lord, we pray on this morning, O oh God, Lord, that you will continue, O oh God, to have your way, O oh God, within us, O oh God. Lord, that you, O oh God, Lord, will continue, O oh God, Lord, to open your arms, your love, O oh God. Lord, in us, O oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus. Father God, Lord, we pray for strength, O oh God, for the body of Christ. Lord, we pray, O oh God, Lord, that we will continue, O oh God, Lord, to endow ourselves, O oh God, in your presence, O oh God, in the name of Jesus, Father. Lord, let us, O oh God, be where you are, O oh God. Lord, let us have the mindset, O oh God, to dwell in your presence, oh God, in unity and oneness, Father, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, Lord, we pray, oh God, Lord, on today, oh God, Lord, for this communion, oh God. Lord, Father, we pray, oh God, Lord, that you forgive us for every sin, God, that we committed, oh God. Lord, anything, God, that was not appealing unto you, God, Lord, we ask that you forgive us, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God. Father God, give us a clean heart, God. Give us a pure heart, God. A pure my God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, cleanse us, oh God, Lord, with your blood, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, Father God, Lord, as we come, oh God, Lord, in remembrance, oh God, Lord, taking drink, oh God, Lord, in eating, oh God, Lord, in remembrance, oh God, Lord, of the sacrifice, oh God, remembrance, oh God, that Jesus died on the cross for us and rose again, oh God, and yet today he is living and he lives in us, oh God, Lord, we give you the glory, God, we give you the praise, oh God, Lord, for this day, oh God, that you have made, oh God, in the mighty name of Jesus, oh God, and Lord, we give you the glory, the praise, and these things we ask in Jesus' mighty name, thank God, and amen. Thank amen. God, thank God, amen, praise God. <laughs> it's communion time, uh, praise God, I thank God uh, for the word on today, you know, uh, church, I was uh, studying and I realized, you know, Malachi, the book of Malachi, God was um, saying that, uh, that uh, he didn't like, um, when you uselessly praise him, you just praise him for whatever. Or you think you supposed to praise him and you praise him and you don't really offer up anything uh, worthy to him. Uh, he says um, in Malachi 1.10, uh, just the last little part, it says, nor will I accept an offering from you. Uh, you know, Cain offered up something to the Lord uh, and the Lord uh, rejected it. You know, he didn't want the work of Cain. Uh, he didn't want Cain to be boasting. Uh, he didn't want Cain to think that he did anything great. Uh, the Lord doesn't enjoy strange fire. He doesn't enjoy uh, uh, smells that don't make sense. Uh, it's just strange to him. He just wants you to be right. Uh, the funny thing, uh, when he wants you to be right, 
uh, he makes it so. He makes it so. Uh, we, we can't think uh, that we work in our own strength, that we cannot think that. Uh, we, when we come to Christ, we're born again. We're new. We're babies. We're children of God. We are not adults in Christ. And God wants our best. Uh, what is our best? Uh, it is to do his will. It is to work what he has put in you. Work what he has put in you. Uh, so if you offer up something to the Lord, offer up what he has already given you. Huh? When they were making sacrifices, they were picking the animals out of their own yard. God had already blessed them with the sacrifice. God had already blessed them with what to offer up. Okay? So all I want us to do is to get out of our own way and offer up to God uh, what he gave us in the first place. Praise God. And right now, uh, the prayer has been prayed uh, for the forgiveness of sins, uh, for our, our shortcomings. Uh, you know, so we're going to just go ahead and have communion. And I'm going to read the word of God from Matthew 26 and 26. Okay. And as they were eating, Jesus took bread and blessed it and break it and gave it to the disciples and said, take, eat, this is my body. And he took the cup and he gave thanks and gave it to them saying, I drink ye all of it, for this is my blood of the New Testament, which is shed for many for the remission of sins. And we thank God for the resurrection. We thank God for the reading of the word. We thank God for each and every one of you again today. And it is time for our announcements. Amen. Good morning again. Um, uh, the um, announcements are in the chat. If you wish to open it, take a look at it. If there's anything you need to save or want to review for later, it is in the chat. Um, thank God for a wonderful word on uh, this morning. Uh, no different from any other morning, but thank God just the same.